Alright, so tell me a bit about yourself in good game. Again, what do you do there? What what activities do you do there? Tell, tell me about yourself. Now I usually go to good game mainly to um, play like games, get introduced to games, discuss uh, games, um, interact with the community with the people there, find new ideas, um, new ways people do things. Uh, I'm a person who integrates myself in any place and try to like extract from it whatever interests me and whatever I can fit into my own context. So this is what I try to do there. And uh, what what kind of activities do th do that in specific? Um, usually, um, I do one of two things. Either I show up to support like uh, the Pokemon community I am part of, um, because the community that community is a bit small. I want it to grow. I can relax more once it's grown fully. But until then. Um, uh, it's uh, that's what I focus on, but eventually I'm gonna focus on like uh, other card games. I enter other card games, try them, experience them. Um, they have uh, a lot of uh, catalogs I can choose from when it comes to the card games and the communities there. Um, I, but what I usually do is just get there and see what they're doing and see if I can be a part of it. So if they're doing a board game, it's like okay, can I get in? If they do Dungeons and Dragons, I get myself in there. Um, basically, I'm painting. Same thing. The idea is I show up, I see what they're doing. I immerse myself in it and see whether it's something that would be uh, entertaining to me and whether I want to continue on it. Uh, you said that once the uh, Pokemon community grows, you can relax. What do you mean by that? Why would you relax if it grows? Um, generally, I, right now I feel like, um, like besides Aziz and uh, uh, like a certain number of others, we're like the pillars that the community is holding on. Like if we all or one of us loses interest, the community gets a huge bump of damage. And because of that, um, like at this fragile state, a state where it's, it's, it didn't just start when it started, the numbers were huge. Everybody was so excited to try this new thing or try this in Kuwait for the first time. But now that we're in the stage where like people, the interest is a bit decreasing because they've seen it, but there isn't enough to keep them to come. And that period is the most sensitive. You need to keep showing, keep entertaining. I was, before Pokemon, I was part of it, the uh, Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu community. And uh, our gym, the history of it goes that it started with one guy who did classical Jiu-Jitsu, who was on a side, but he, he did classical Jiu-Jitsu, right? And when he, uh, eventually he liked uh, the Brazilian variants better and he kind of trade himself and then enter tournaments and won and then slowly started teaching as part of the gym he was originally a part of and there were times in his case where he would show up only with another student like two people and they, they would do nothing but push-ups and setups and some sparring because that's all he can do and uh, they stayed at that stage for years we're talking five six seven years and then I was part of the generation that actually exploded. I was part of the like original like 15 who entered um, the tournament that made Jiu-Jitsu big in Kuwait. And when that happened, um, the numbers was 20 of the numbers like lows these days. Now, if, oh, nobody showed up, that's 20 people, um, which is way more than the three people classes I used to attend. I know Pokemon is going through this stage. I've experienced it. I've seen it. And until like the explosion happens, a big event or something, an opportunity shows up where you can, uh, where the community just explodes and the numbers increase astronomically, um, we have to keep it going somehow. The, the, the fires of my old coach, Fozan, um, kept it alive for five, six years. I don't think we're going to need that long, but we have to give it as much time as we need. So that's what I mean by it. Uh, do you consider yourself one of the founders of the Pokemon community in Kuwait? No. I am definitely not the f like one of the founders. The founders would be Aziz, Salem, and the community that uh, Aziz tried to get me into. What happened was, Aziz, I, I was friends with Aziz from Yu-Gi-Oh! at Dueling Area. And then he was like, oh, we're doing this Pokemon game. I wasn't too interested initially. Eventually, I was like, hmm, I like Pokemon. Might as well. So I told Aziz to make me a deck, and then he introduced me to the community. The community actually poured in to build my deck and make it make it cheaper for me. This was a new experience from Dueling Area, where I, I had to pay and trade and like work hard to to even build a semi-competitive deck. When here, everybody just like, oh, take it. We're happy you're here. Type of thing. I got I got excited for that, 
And ever since, I've put a lot of effort, but I don't think I'm a founding member now. Uh, speaking of that, like the people pooling and all of that, how would you describe the atmosphere, the vibe of Good Game? Good Game itself, not the community. Good Game. Yeah. Um, the initial impression of Good Game was like, when I entered it, I felt some sort of elitist vibe from it that I didn't like. I was new to board games. I just wanted to show up and just see what this is about. And I didn't get a good vibe from it, to be honest. Um, eventually, I revisited this uh, uh, store when, again, Aziz, when I told him that I didn't get a good vibe from it, he was like, no, the people are actually very, very friendly. So I doubted my initial impression, and I entered it again. And um, I would say I was surprised. I, I did not think. Like, maybe it, like, I, it felt like an outsider coming in, but the second you tell them, you show them interest, you start asking them the proper questions instead of just showing up like as part of a trip, you know, like, oh, what is this place about? Of course, the answers will be stiff because I'm stiff. But when I entered, actually interested, it was different and it was like friendly. The way I see good games, it's, it's like this, uh, it's like Duania for, car for board games, basically. It's like a, a bunch of people are like, hey, we have board, board games at, at our house. What if we, like, we have no stores. What if we put a store and see what happens. And people of like-mindedness just showed up and agreed upon doing these things. That's how it looks like. It looks very, like, it's sort of like something that started and then people figured out how to do it. It wasn't, like, planned to be this, but slowly it became this type of thing. And whenever something grows like this, very, like, uh, had a lot of room to breathe, not a lot of stiffness, it always produces good results, and we see that in good game. Uh, it's very interesting how you described it, which is like uh, Duania for board games. Can you elaborate on that? Like, what what other things that? What do you mean by a board game like a Duania for board games? Um, every Monday, um, the good game guys try a new board game. This is like a rule. Like, they get new board games, a bunch of them, and through uh, four four days a, w a month, uh, four days a month, they show up. And they put that board game, they're like, okay, this is a new one, let's try it. Regardless of pricing, regardless of whatever, you, anybody can just show up, sit down, and do this. And um, that does not sound like a trader. You know, that, like, a trader, like, I, I've looked up models of board games online just to see, like, the stores, how they do it. And one of, the, one of the ideas, they have a free section and they have, like, a paid section for the newer things. And you can rent out these for the day. Like, um... Uh, pay this amount and you can get this board game for like a f super fraction of the price or whatever. A good game doesn't even do that. They just want to play. Often whenever you enter you see the, the shop owners like in the middle of a board game or a card game or whatever and uh, they're like hold on guys uh, and they, they see what you want and after they're done with you they go they immediately jump back into the game. It, it's like the, you know oh store duties you know. It's, they always give you that vibe, like whenever they're doing like D and D, the guys who are in charge are doing the D and D campaign. It's like they want people to show up. It's like a duane, you know. Oh, we want more people to show up and have fun with us. The store's just the excuse. Yeah. Um, okay, now the activities that you do in Good Game, you mentioned card games, you mentioned board games, you mentioned painting D and D. Um, how do you see them? What do they mean to you? Uh, as a student, and how do they fit in your schedule as a student? How many times do you go to to good game? What what interests you in board game, card games? What do, how do they fit in your life and your schedule? Uh, generally, I, I consider myself uh, not a very good student, and the reason for that is that I do a lot of things outside of my college environment. I'm 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 studying civil engineering, and I remember saying that I never forgot from one of the professors there, uh, which is an engineer does not have a life. You are supposed, your life has to be engineering. Your life is engineering. I do not agree with this notion. To me, engineering is like a nuisance. To me, I entered it. Sure, I'm going to make money off it eventually, but that money is going to go for something else. The engineering, again, is the means, not really my interest. My interest is people, how people act, how people behave, how people interact. And if there is one form that people cannot hide their personality in, it's when they're playing a game, especially if it's a new game. If you want to learn how somebody thinks, get them into a game they never ever been in. There is no systems to figure out. They only have their own mental processes and their own biases to put into this game. You can tell the quality and, and what the person, how the person actually thinks just by seeing how they play. 
especially if it's a new game and they're not really uh, familiar with it, they're going to use their own fam like their own mental tools to use it. And you can tell what's trained, what's not, um, what trigger, what like triggers their emotion, what does not, what it does not, what they like to say. That's one thing about Dungeons and Dragons is that you can tell what the person likes to play just from the way they're playing. A lot of like the, all of these good dynamics are there, and I can observe them. And in good game, it's just I show up. Whenever I show up, usually it's because I have nothing else to do. I'm a very, I have a very busy schedule. I do a lot of things. And when the opportunity strikes, I go to good games, see what they're up to, enter, and uh, just analyze, be fascinated by it, learn from it, even. So in, in good game and the activities that I have, like the card games, the bullet games, D&D, &D, and the painting, how do you see that they differ from each other? And also... As an elaboration, how do you see the diff these different communities are different from each other? To me, the way I see all of them, it's, um, again, uh, going with our Duania metaphor. It's, you know how in Duania, it's like they're always like, as I like to call them, subsections. Not everybody's doing one thing. Everybody is kind of there and doing different things in smaller scale. Good game is kind of like that. Everybody knows each other. Everybody interacts with each other. But uh, uh, I'm showing up for painting today. Today I feel like painting instead of playing a board game. Today I'm showing up for D and D. Uh, today I'm actually just here to talk. I'm just I have nothing to do when I showed up. <coughs> like they like it's just like again everybody has like as I like to call it um, a philosophy of coexistence. Everybody's doing their thing. We're doing this over here. You do this over there. We talk. We say hi. If I know you, I'll talk to you. If I'm part of your community or I want to be a part of your community, I'm immediately welcome to try it and enter. That's one aspect. Like All of them are like interconnected with an, with an air of friendliness. They're friendly. They want you to show up, but no pressure. Oh, you're showing up for Pokemon? Cool. Um, well, I'm showing up for this, and maybe the Pokemon thing dissipates, and you show up to the other thing. Oh, what are you doing? Magic. Oh, let me look. What about magic? Blah blah blah. And they start introducing each other. I've always noticed that they are very into intermingling all their communities together, which is new to me at least. And these communities, and from your own personal experiences, what are the differences between them? Do you know? Did you notice any differences in the dynamics? The atmospheres of these communities, uh, these activities. Yes, yes, actually, um, there is what I like to call. Let's just say my initial impression of elitism was not misplaced. For example, like you can see, the magic guys are very elitist about them playing the t the number one card game in the world, and sometimes you see it in their tone. They try to hide it, and that's good for them. But you see it; it's there. They're biased. They think this is the best game. Actually, like some of them are even bland enough to say it. Um, to them, every other game is like a distraction. Oh, I'm bored of magic. Let's try this other thing. So in the magic community in particular, you can tell some air of elitism. They don't show it. They're very subtle about it, but I notice it. Um, in the board game group, uh, in the board game groups, like the people who only show up for board games, have an air of a, like uh, protectiveness. Um, if you're doing board games you, and you tell them, like, why don't you try a card game? They're like, mm, I'm not really into card games. And they start, like, being nervous about that question. Like, you shouldn't ask it. Like, you ask them about their murdered parents or something. You know, like, um, I only like board games and I have defined my identity with this. Not all of them are like this. Most people who play board games also play card games. But there are some, and I notice it. Uh, for the painting, the painting is just painting. Like uh, it's like uh, the bastard child of the of the place. It's just there. They do it. They sit. They do it. And then ev everybody who does painting also does everything else. So it's just like, oh, I felt like painting today. Or oh, you have painting. Painting is fun. Let me try it. And sort of got into it. That's all painting is. The bastard child. Ev nobody has a problem with it. Uh, but nobody. Uh, everybody is happy. It's there. Bastard child. Exactly. And what about the indie? D and D. I actually have not did not interact enough with the D and D guys because they show up for D and D and then they disappear. It's like uh, uh, it's like they use they just use good game for the tables. To be honest, uh, oh you guys host good game. We can meet people who can 
play uh, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons here? Great. Let's just let's just use this spot. And uh, some people use it like an outside DM. Some people use the, the store DMs, and they have a D and D day. And the idea of that, I think, guess, is just that they love. Uh, I talked to Zed once, and he's always like, uh, "I love board games instead of video games because you see more of the person always." And D and D is that the ultimate form of you see the person because uh, the world is literally a person talking to you. The characters are just people with sheets talking to you. It's just all of you are into it as people. The game is just the excuse. Um, and I don't think anybody has a problem with it, but the rest who don't do it always look at it with like, like some, like, as I like to call it, like, you know, the creeped curiosity because the D and D guys get really into it, and I know because I've been there. You get really into it, but if you're looking from the outside in, you can never know. It's like looking at them like a, I don't know, uh, a ballet dancer. What? What does? What's so appealing about doing ballet? That doesn't make sense until you do it. You don't know. Sword fighting, same thing. Sword fighting looks stupid, but when you actually hold the sword and you see the complexity of it and the weight of the blade and the way you do the cut, it's very different. D and D is kind of similar. Except it just looks so geeky, it pushes people away. And all the other communities look at D&D just with, like, with a sort of, like, curious, but also creeped out. But the D&D guys don't care, because they know how they look, and they're okay with it. Uh, it's actually interesting that you said that uh, the D&D is, like, shows up and then disappears. Even though, like, when I did the D&D campaign, they gave me the card with the code, as, and... When I looked up the website of Good Game, they said that they're an official uh, Wizards of the Coast store and they can host official D&D games. It's very interesting that they just come and disappear. Like, don't you think that it should have been bigger? Or is it bigger? Or what's, what's the deal with that? Here's the thing with D&D. D&D is not a competitive format. D&D is just you're using the system Wizards of the Coast created in order to have an experience with people. And... Basically, the way it goes, as far as I've experienced it, D and D depends on the people so much. It's very hard to like, let's say, control it. They can host D and D sessions, but I don't think you need to be an official place. The official place is just for people to know that this is an official place. If they look up the Wizards of the Coast site, do people do a D and D there? Oh, they do. So I can come in with this knowledge of D and D that I have and have a proper uh, D&D session with no house rules because the idea of D&D if you do it at home you can have as many house rules as you want But if you're gonna do it in a more public place There must be more rules to be agreed upon more canon to be explored to if you will and Being an official uh, Wizards of the Coast thing means like the guy who's in charge of the Emming Knows the rules and so when an alien comes from like uh, Zimbabwe or something and he wants D to play D&D you have agreed upon language. Okay, this is the system. This is a centaur. This is like an elf. This is a whatever. We know these. But in house rules, we can be like, guys, can we agree like elves don't have magic? It's more fun that way. And whenever a new guy comes in, he has to fit to the rules. But some people want just to play the way they're used to. And that's why I think they're official. But there is no other reason. Yeah. And out of these activities, which are like board games, the card games, and painting in D&D. Which one of these would you consider your favorites and why? I... Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. What, what was the question? <laughs> Out of these activities, which one is your favorite? I don't like to pick favorites usually, mainly because I don't know. It's like, what, what are you feeling like today? What's your favorite today? Okay, today my favorite is steak. Tomorrow it can be like lasagna. Same thing. But if I'm going to have the, the activity that I'm most into, I will pick Pokemon for now. The only reason is that I invested a lot of time into it. I'm the guy who built the decks for my small mini community. And uh, I'm the one who like practices, puts them together. Um, I watch tournaments to make sure I, I have the proper canon in place. I I made it more of my schedule. And because of that, I'm just going to pick that as my favorite because I do more of it. 
but if I'm gonna pick a favorite, that's like, I don't know. And basically, the the whole community in good game. Have you made any good or strong friendships there? And if if you did, did you extend it outside of good game? I've made a good amount of friends in good game, but I did not extend beyond it yet, mainly because I don't have time, not because I can't. Um, uh, generally, I go into good game when I have time, or I make time at a certain time for a tournament or a act certain activity, but I never really had the opportunity at this stage of my life to sit down and like make hard friendships. I got introduced uh, into the Pokemon community by Aziz. I met a lot of great people there, I talked to them. Um, some of them I met later, but all of them were Aziz's friends already. So, like, if I met, like, if anything, Aziz introduced me to them, it's not good game. So, right now, not really. Uh, I made a great amount of people, they know me there, and now I'm noted, I'm that guy, whatever that guy means. And um, that's it for now. But we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, you mentioned the dueling area uh, earlier. And how do you see that, like, is good game different from the dueling area? And how would it be different? And how, how, how was your experience different in Good Game than the Dolly Gary or any other story you've been in? Um, as, far, as far as I know, both these places were made in the same way, in the sense that both of them were passionate about something. And they decided to like make a place for it initially to um, just have people interact there and eventually to start like making money and expanding and these things. But they diverged um when the topic of diversity showed up and by diversity i mean diversity of games good game welcomes new games they want if they just like the second ephemery serves uh when they discovered that, that there are people who are willing to play pokemon they brought the product in and when they saw it's being sold very highly they got encouraged and even invested even more and and they always like, if you guys have, want to use our place for your card game and you want us to bring your product in to sell it, by all means, tell us. We'll do it. And um, that's very different from the way uh, Dueling Area does it. As far as I'm concerned, the way Yugi, like uh, Dueling Area does it, first, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! For, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! first. That's, like, their first rule. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh! place. Then they slowly started introducing other card games in, but they stopped at card games. They have like a small section where you can play video games there, like if people just want to chill and not play the card game, but they never went into board games, they never expanded their store. They stayed in the same area and they um, focused on the card game aspect with Yu-Gi-Oh! first always, regardless of how many do the other thing. Um, the, and other, other differences, um, good game, again, it's, it's more of a Duania vibe. Um, but the, that Duania is more like a very chill, um, everybody does their thing, welcome, sit down, let's see what you're up to. Uh, Duania du 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 is like a Duania, but the difference is, uh, it's the Duania of like, um, I, there's no way to say it but insecure people. You know, when you enter a place and everybody wants to show how macho they are, except they're not. That's how Dueling Areas looks like. Everybody's just like desperate for some reason everybody looks like that's the only thing they do <coughs> you go to good game and it's like a bunch of family men showing up to take a break from the wife you know that's how they look like no, they, are. They, they are there they we are. go they are. they are they're all like okay you know with like kids why let's sit down and pretend i'm like an elf mage and like you crush dragons and like uh, experience court intrigue you know but the dueling area guys looks like guys who don't have a wife you know we're just sitting there, like hormones exploding. That's that's how they look like, and that's how they feel like when you talk to them. In good game, you can talk in topics outside of board games, and people would keep up. In doing it, they'd lose interest. It's weird, but like, it's just like how do, how do you describe it? One promotes diversity, and the other wants you to be this thing, and if you're not, you're judged for it. And it's just an unwelcoming air, unwelcoming area. Uh, the uh, doing areas in the Rahab Center, and if the, if if I had to pick a worst spot for a community, it would be a Rahab, because it's just like a, like more of a general stores. It's like you know this, you know you enter this store, everybody yells at you to buy their stuff, 
and then you go to good like to play your card games it's weird when you go to good game it's in the Sanable tower it's a very like very um just the vibe is different the vibe is chill the vibe is okay it's a store it's quiet any noise that comes out is from the good game store and it's some people laughing there isn't like there isn't a mess like it is a rahab and well a lot of people like the rahab vibe um, I don't support it, and I don't. I don't like it. Why do you not like it? It's just you always judge a product by its what it like. You ever, you ever, let me rephrase. You always judge a house by what it produces. If the house is like seems super great with all these great features, but it outputs bad people. Most likely, there's something wrong in the house. Maybe it's the, the, the people, but in the end, the house has a problem. And um, when I when you set a good game and when you set a dueling area, and you look at the output, the output being, of course, the people who sat there, the people who stayed, especially the people who always come, and you compare them, the difference is astronomical. That's uh, that's a pile of insecurities, uh, trying to hide it, and the other is a pile of we're here to rest and have fun, and that's what we're feeling like. You know, like people are like tired from work and they sit down; they're too tired to fight. It's like like modern day Europe, you know. But that's good game. They're just chilling. It's done. We did our pain and misery. Now let's sit down and have some fun. But when you look at dueling area, the misery starts there. You know, look, I'm friendliness, defensiveness. You don't do the same thing I do. You don't talk about the same products I do. You're not as competitive I am. I, I remember when I showed up with my shitty decks just to just to have fun because that's how I played my entire life. I'm not going to change it for you guys. They're like, oh, how could you? I would never enter a deck that wouldn't win. Like, how insecure do you have to be to, like, never play for fun but always play to win? They're very similar, playing for fun and playing to win, but if your primary goal is winning and not fun, don't play games. Play competition. Go start by throwing people in judo or whatever. These are winning uh, environments that promote winning. Certain gyms, all pro-winning, not pro-fun. Go there. Don't go to games. It's called a game. You're supposed to have fun first. And that's what good game promotes, and doing area kind of doesn't care about. Um, I basically noticed that like whenever I I play a game or whenever I do any activity in a good game, um, I usually felt like I, I feel like I'm uh, I basically bond with the people there. Do you feel that? Yes. Uh, do you think that the bonding happened in the game or before and after the game, as in the talks before and after the game, or is it in the game? Personally, for me, after. To me, the game is like the discussion topic. What you do is you sit. You play this game, and after that, you start discussing. So what you do is, like, I remember I played a couple of games, Diplomacy, Battle of Rakuga, and stuff like that, and the most interesting part is us talking about our thought process during the game. So like, oh, I, when you did this, you meant that, oh, I was going to do that to you, but that guy ruined it, and we start t talking like two hours after the game, even, the, even though the game took half an hour. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the, the fun part. The before part, not so much. Always the after part is the most delicious. And in the middle game, it's just... Um, it's just the excuse, really. The excuse to reach the end stage where you discuss it. Does that also apply to D&D? D&D is the discussion, so it's, it's, it's more mixed, but it's the same thing, yeah. yeah. Once you get out of the context of the characters, and you're like, you're free to talk more than before. You know, like, you start like, oh, what did you do this? You, you dumbass should have done that. And because in good game, like, or in D&D, you kind of hold yourself. You can't give the other people ideas. That's cheating. You give them after the thing. And uh, basically, for you and Good Game, do you think that Good Game did anything in the, let's say, business decisions or anything that made you more encouraged to participate? Like, what do you think that they did any decisions as a store that, that basically encouraged you, or do you think not, and why, why not? Um, the, f the show up to try a board game system they have, a new board game every Monday, and any type, any type of day, any open game you have, you can try it before you buy it. And if you don't have the money, you can just try it. If we're not busy, we'll set up the game and play. That's genius to me. 
because let's say I'm new to board games I'm, I'm not sure sure that I like this or not you always try to go with the cheapest stuff and like you know maybe build yourself something murky and just like try it out and see if it's fun good game tells you no just show up dude we got you D&D for free whatever for free you don't have to spend a single cent in good game you can just show up as a member there and that's that'll be okay that's a, that's a smart business choice to me uh, okay, uh, from what I've heard of you, and from what I already know of you, uh, you talked about the 3D printer, and you're basically like thinking of making figures. Uh, are you interested in like maybe eventually starting to extend a sort of business to good game? Do you think it's an, a good place for you to to build a quote unquote business or or a community? A uh, good game has a lot of good qualities, but expanding is not one of them. I'm an, I'm an expansionist in heart. When I make something, I want it to grow and grow and grow and grow until I get bored of it and I throw it at somebody else to throw. That's just how I work. In good game, they're, again, Duanier based. And in Duanier, you just want the, the people you know. If it starts growing too much, it, starts hard, it becomes hard to maintain. And you can see their, their, their style is more oriented around the core base rather than expa like an expansion. Um, if I'm going to make any sort of business, um, maybe I'll use good game initially, but it, it is in the end of the goal to expand and try out more places and try out more businesses and become uh, even bigger, which is what I always aim to be. Uh, okay, time for a bonus question. Uh... <laughs> uh... You talked about expansion and growth yeah. and how good game tends to be like family oriented, a little closed, the, the way you describe it like, but I've heard that good game actually wants to buy a new store and they want to expand their territory. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you think it's a good idea? Is it maybe a good, like, is it, it could it be like a sign that good game is expanding? Or, and how do you feel about it? Is it a good idea? Is it not a good idea? And why? I heard that they're gonna eventually like move out and they're trying to move out, but I also heard that they've been trying to for the past two years. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the change is just space oriented. There isn't enough space. Like there's a table, ta like there are like three tables, and you have to like borrow territory from the walking space between the stores in order to like do tournaments and stuff like that. I think they want to do it more indoors. I think Good Game want to make some sort of food joint there for people to eat because like there isn't. Um, the rules of the building do not allow you to put um, uh, merchandise uh, like that you like that you can eat unless you're certified and they don't have that certification and nor, nor is it worth it. So maybe they're going to move in a place with less rules on that matter. Um, it's just to make the place more comfortable. I don't see it as an expansion move as long as, as, as much as it is like we want to have more convenience for, for our service. All right then, thank you. Thank you so much. No, that's all the God damn, you talk too much, man. Yes. Like you could have summed up everything in half an hour, but no. Thirty.